It's Personal Finance now with Charles Fakroha. He'll be talking to us about uh, personal finance planning for small businesses. Good to have you join us again today. Good morning, Pepe. I'm surprised to see you today. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Samson, as always. Uh, uh, it's good because, having you on board. You can say that again. Yeah. Well, very quickly, finance planning for small businesses. Talk to us mm -hmm. about that. Why is it important for them? Um, you see, most of the things we talk about when we are discussing personal finance, we look at it from the perspective of salary earners. And salary earners, you know, they have a fixed period where their cash flow comes in. So it's easy. You can advise them, you can plan for them regarding their finances on a personal level. But what about those of us who are self-employed mm -hmm. or who run a small business? How do you plan for them? How do you advise them? Well, when you're not sure of what comes in every month. Yeah. When it comes to their own personal finance. Okay. That is the essence of why we are here today. Okay. Or are they not expected to do personal finance? So the first thing we do for them is we kind of ask them to segregate between their personal finance okay. and their business finance okay mm -hmm. they have this tendency because they are so passionate about their business so so they don't even are not even on salary not on allowance so every money they have they still apply it back into the to business the it might seem good for them in the short term but in the long run it will not be good for them okay. and so as a financial planner a therapist what we tell them is Separate your business, your business finance from your personal finance. <clears throat> Let me come in here. For yes. someone who is just starting now and maybe the person isn't working, how would the person be able to separate, you know, personal finance from business finance when we know that money isn't even coming in from anywhere? So it's until this business stands that I'll start saying, okay, this is personal, this is for me. Do you start paying yourself immediately? Good. When you start a small business, you need to support that small business. Mm -hmm. It will get to a time that's where that business can now support you. Okay. So you have to look at it from this point of view. You are just starting the business, that's nothing. But you have passion for that business. You must have gotten finance one way or the other, maybe from family members, from friends, or you were working before you made some savings okay. and you start that business. Now we are saying for you now to plan your personal finance while you are running your business separate that business from your own personal finance and the best way to do that is for you to be on an allowance or a fixed salary because in your small business you might have one or two persons you pay no matter how small you also pay yourself now it is from that what you pay yourself that you cannot begin to plan in terms of your personal finances and let the business be on its own how do you determine what to pay yourself? You, you were working somewhere before. Mm -hmm. Okay? Maybe you were working in government or with somebody. And you now know that being the founder, of course, you might not pay yourself commensurate with what you are doing. Because like you said, you are just starting, starting the business. The business yeah. So that you just need to be on an allowance, maybe just to keep you going, okay. your basic necessities. Then, of course, gradually, when the business is taking shape, the business, you can increase... Just as you increase the salary of your workers as time goes on, based on their performance, you can also be increasing your own. Not when you start today. That's when you want to use the latest uh, <laughs> car or thereabout. Yes, yeah, Samson. No, no. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to you know grasp everything. Okay. Go, go ahead. <laughs> so, and why we're even saying this? In the capital market, that's what they call commingling. Uh -huh. You don't you don't commingle your funds and the uh, funds, funds of are... your Client. Okay. So oh, the same okay. thing. <laughs> so the same thing as a small business owner. Don't commingle your personal finance and your business finance. Okay. That's the first thing we have to ask them to segregate. Okay. Yes. The next thing we advise them is, you have to plan your liquidity. Normally, when you start a small business, the first thing I advise I advise the owner is, you need to ch have a change in your money clock. You know, for a salary worker employee. 30 days, and that's on the 5th of the month, 30th of the month, 
you you have that mental clock but when you start your own business if you want to use that same mentality mm. as an employee now as a self-employed you have issues okay. so your mental money or your mental clock will need to change money clock sorry we need to change because money can come tenth of the month when you do business you can be mm -hmm. paid money cannot come in for a whole month so you need to have that mindset that i am now a self-employed person i should not be thinking as an employee now what you are not doing that you need to now do what we call emergency savings for your business mm -hmm. Okay. Just like for individuals, we say Most three to six that, months of yes. your, your personal expenses, you have it in a, an emergency fund. The same also applies for the business. At least have three to six months emergency fund for the business. So that those times that when the finances are not coming, you can dip your hand there and use it to run the businesses. But the tendency for these small business owners is they now go and draw from their personal savings. And like I said, it seems nice short term, but to the medium and long term, it is detrimental. What if it's to a them. loan to the business? Yes, you give a loan to the business from your personal from savings. your personal savings. Okay. Ensure that it's well documented so that at the end of the day, the business should be able to pay, pay you, back. you back. Yes. Okay. L l let me come in here. You know, on on the short term basis you are talking about, we, we know quite well that the average Nigerian, especially those who are retired now the, the, you know during the course of service they saved up and whatever yeah. they were able to get from their gratuity and all of that was what they invested into their business to yes. start up let's take a provision store for example <laughs> you know j j which yes. is more like the prevalent thing for mm. most people um during that instance there's no primary source of income coming in again okay. and virtually everything was mopped up for that small business or yes. for that business both gratuity you know pension the savings just for the business at that time it's really difficult to differentiate personal business for um, personal, personal finance, finance from, from the business, the business because of the peculiarity of that time but yes. i understand over time you know there would be distinction yes. i'm saying for that you know period of time the short time maybe two years three years where the entire personal finance is what is in the business how do you then still encourage such a person to you know keep up with yes look at it from this point of view okay the business should have a life on its own. Yes. And after some time? Well, we're even advising that you get a name for the business. Oh, okay, okay. You okay. can have a business name. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a limited company. Apparently. That's what they call it, I think, a business name. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's different from you. And by law, <laughs> the business, that is a legal entity mm -hmm. on its own that can be sued and uh, sued. Yes. You understand? Some business um, law there. Okay? Now, you have that. We also advise you, you, you don't have to invest all your savings in just that business. It's like putting all your eggs in no one basket. basket. And you know, we are saying you need to have minimum three to six months of your basic expenses mm -hmm. in an emergency fund. fund. Okay. Imagine you start that business, and we have seen so many of them. And from statistics, negative mm -hmm. one, said all small businesses die before Within three five to five years, years. <laughs> exactly yeah. the few ones that survive the ones that we are seeing so having that in mind you need to plan for your basic expenses so all your savings should not go into starting that business, business. you should have some in emergency fund okay. so that as you run the business you there are issues you can fall back to okay and that is a big problem for smes because they don't do that and once there is an issue in their business, what happens? They have gone. That takes me to the next advice we normally give them. Okay. In terms of retirement planning. Who funds your retirement planning? Because you have just retired from maybe government service. Mm -hmm. yes. You will not continue to keep working and working again. Oh, so you have to plan another retirement. You have to plan another, yes. You have to plan. Maybe you have left government service at 50, 52. You want to start something on your own. Even if you think you want to keep working and working, a time will come. You want to run, you can't run. Age has come into place. Things that you used to do before, you can't do them again. So you have to form that 
your old age, who formed it for you? She must plan for your retirement. Now, some persons have said there are no laws that guys and SME mm -hmm. in terms of uh, These, retirement yeah. planning. But we are saying no, today in Nigeria, we have the Pension Reform Act of 2004 as amended mm -hmm. 2014. Once you have a business, I think five to six persons, it's mandatory that you have a form of retirement planning for each of them, and including yourself too, because you are an, an employee of that um, business. business. But what about my age? It doesn't that matter. Is it, it, it doesn't really matter. To, to age? Even the, the government uh, workers, once you retire at 50, or any oh, private, uh, whatever, you go and meet your PFA. Oh, okay. You make okay. all the arrangement, inform PENCOM that you want to start another phase. It's usually from 50. They give you that opportunity. Okay. So what they can say, okay, at 50 now, I want to start consulting. I don't want to work for anybody. Meanwhile, you've contributed as an employee. Yes. You can have access of some of those funds. Mm -hmm. Then you now do a re-registration of that your business now that you want to start paying for your retirement. As a consultant. As a consultant or as any other business. Yeah. You do all those documentation and then... Um, you are good apart to go. from PFA, aren't there other plans? Maybe annuity or some of these other things that that's we for? That is insurance. We're coming to that. Okay. But what do we see today? Most small businesses and even some medium business. I don't know why the government cannot implement the laws. Because it's, it's criminal. As long as it's, it's, it's an act by an act of uh, is it parliament. Yeah. So, if... Um, is government even aware that they exist? Oh, well, we don't register the CAC. Anyway, so those are some of the issues, you know. Then the last point, of course, is insurance. Okay. You need to plan not only your personal insurance, but the business insurance. insurance. I think so this is a good place to really end <laughs> this conversation. If anything happens, <laughs> you can bounce back to business. Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Charles Fracker. It's always a pleasure having you on board. That was nice. Charles Fracker there taking us through the ropes of, um, you know, um, planning when it comes to the business aspect of things especially in terms of our finances well we have to wrap up the show now with the quote of the day and pep what's 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 the quote saying okay very quickly for the quote <laughs> of the day uh, this is by carol burnett carol mm -hmm. burnett says when you have a dream you've got to grab it and never let go that's great yeah, very great it's one i must say when you have a dream go mm -hmm. after it don't let it go exactly exactly well, that's the size of our package this morning. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us. It's Ibrand Daybreak, and I'm Samson Lady to say and have a good day. And I'm Perpetual, fast and repeat. I'd enjoy the rest of the day. Bye for now.